Hi everybody, I am Mohammed. Today I'll be talking about creating a highly available persistent session management service using Redis and a connection pool. I'm the lead software engineer at Zulily of the e-commerce platform team at uh, Zulily. Zulily business model is all about discovery driven uh, experience. The customers that come to Zulily are coming for comes to the site or the apps to discover new products or and enjoy the experience. It's like going to a boutique or going to a mall where there is no intent. Maybe there could there could be no intent of buying, but the main intent is discovering what's there. So that leads to that the site is super personalized and every customer has a, it's his own version of the site. So you can think about it that we're launching millions of sites per day. And this led to very technical or different, this led to very interesting technical problems uh, for the engineering team. That a typical architecture of a database over a cache wouldn't work fine. Okay, so what's the problem? Or what is the problem that we had? The problem that we had is if session goes down, you can't serve the customer. And and as, as a fact, as the main fact for us as engineers, is everything goes, everything fails all the time. Everything fails all the time. Legacy architecture. No highly available hardware or network degradation leads to a failure. Sharding logic is coupled in the application level. It's a typical architecture where we had a twin proxy deployed uh, over every node of the clients. Uh, the clients here are the apps and, and the site clusters. They're talking to uh, an application uh, cluster that includes that will will have the sharding logic embedded within this application uh, cluster and then on the back end or the storage layer will be uh, a nodes of uh, redis that will be backed by slave nodes um, what 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 was the problems here what was what what's the problems that we faced with this architecture it was not highly highly available any network degradation leads to a failure. Any process, the sharding logic was coupled within the application uh, cluster. So that meant that any failures in the Redis nodes or any required manual interventions uh, to promote the slave to a master, it had a limit to uh, global expansion. We considered multiple approaches and one of them was why don't we just use Redis? Why don't we use Redis cluster? It wouldn't really suit to our current problem, which was Redis cluster was still in active passive mode, and it wouldn't really suit uh, for large event or large network partition failures, which is something that we faced uh, a couple of times that a whole zone goes down that led a complete outage on the site. We also consider Redis Sentinel, but still the sharding logic will, will still be coupled with the application and it still was an active passive mode that we wanted to go away from and use a more peer-to-peer -peer approach. The new architecture was split into three main layers. We deprecated the twin proxy with a custom proxy. We abstracted the the sharding logic and all the logic of the session to its own service. We used Redis and Dynamite, Redis plus Dynamite for, we used Redis as a, a, as a data storage and we used uh, Dynamite for real-time replications. I will talk in the next slides about these three layers uh, in details. Our face, first layer, which is the connection uh, connection pooling proxy? Why did we need we Why did we need to build a new a new proxy? And why didn't we just leverage uh, Twin Proxy? The new architecture, the new service, 
here the the, the, the apps or or the, the clients no more have a direct connection with Redis. It's there, they they see they 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 are basically using uh, another application service in the middle, a microservice that handles uh, this. We still deployed on every box of the site and the app, uh, every box of the clients with a connection with 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 uh, with, a, with a proxy with a with with the customer proxy and. The rule of the the, the rule of the, the proxy was constraining the total number of connection, leveraging existing, reduce the overhead of creating a new connection every time between the service and and, and the clients. The second uh, tier was the session service. It's, it's, it's the service that handled the, the real logic of it. The responsibility of the service was basically West routing based on consistent hashing. Murmur, mur, mur, we used Murmur uh, for our for our system here. It's also doing the the traffic distribution based on geolocation. The service was aware about about uh, the topology of the underlying uh, data tier, which we'll talk about in details uh, now. Uh, this is our this is this is the data storage tier. So we got rid of the master slave approach and we used uh, we when we we got rid of the master slave approach and we got we used uh, the peer to peer uh, architecture using uh, dynamite an open source uh, a netflix open source project for replicating the data across uh, across the regions the data centers uh, definition here in, in, in this graph it's, it's basically a virtual uh, grouping of um, could be AZs, could be data set, could be could be AZs, could be regions, could be uh, a, a data center, could be different data centers, AWS or Google Cloud. The next very challenging thing for us is how we how we get this, how we roll this to to production. How how can we really get this system out to production? It was very challenging to roll out to get this system to to production how to make sure that especially because of the crit criticality of the data it's the customer session there's there is no room for failures here how do you get the system to production that was a very challenging problem for us what did we use here we basically used we start double writing to the old system and the new system and uh, we used we copied all the data offline from the slave nodes that we have in the whole, whole architecture previous to the point of T1. And we started double reading. By double read here, I mean that we still considered the legacy architecture as a real source of data, but as a real source of truth. But we were making a percentage of the calls. We did data sanity checks to verify that all the data that is coming from the new service matches exactly the customer data that's um, on the old, uh, matches the data that's in the old system. And then we start applying chaos engineers, chaos engineering on the new system. So that's the result of, of, of one of our chaos uh, engineering examples. This is one of, one of the examples to our After simulating an outage on two, <coughs> two out of our three partitions, we basically went and started killing a bunch of Redis nodes, a bunch of Dynamite nodes, a bunch of the services. We start killing the load balancers. We intentionally started to introduce uh, network latencies. We and, and the final state of it was two out of our three regions in AWS was completely out down out of out of service and here was the results if you look at the p99 that's the p99.9 .9 during the outage was was still less than seven milliseconds and that was measured from the client perspective on on the browser that's measured from the client because if we measure it from redis 
it's, 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 it's basically milliseconds. The total failure during this outage, the total failure during this time was 0.42%, and the recovery window of it was 250 milliseconds. If I compare this with the with the legacy architecture, we would technically have an outage, a complete two-thirds of our customers wouldn't be able to browse the site, wouldn't be able to log in, browse the system. So what did we learn and what, what, what do we think with that? What was the trade-offs? What was the drawbacks? There's no perfect architecture. Scaling this scale can only happen in multiple hosts. So we had, so to, to add a new node to, to scale up, you have to scale based on the number of regions or zones that you, 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 st you, you decided to, 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 to uh, deploy your system to. We saw way higher network traffic volume, and that made sense because we split it down. The we split it down. We extracted the 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 certain we extracted the session from the application uh, from the application server. So it, it became multi, and then we introduced another proxy level, and we introduced another uh, and the, the traffic between uh, the replication of of the Redis nodes. Adding a node uh, to the ring is 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 manual process, so you have to manually uh, is a manual process. Recapping everything we talked about, we used proxy. We use a proxy layer on every box to maintain connection pooling, to maintain the HTTP connection pooling, and do the and do a very basic uh, metrics calculations. We abstracted the logic of the sessions to a, to its own session service, to its to a new to a microservice called set, to a to a session service to a to a microservice. We used Redis and Dynamite as we used Redis as a permanent data storage. Redis is not only a cache; it's a persistent layer. layer. Redis is not only used as a cache; it it, it can be it's a persist it can be used as a persistent layer design your system for failures design the system that it will fail theory is different than practicality to prove your design use apply case engineering over your design replicate your data across multiple regions and use real-time out replication Thank you very much. I'll be around for any questions. Please feel free to ping me anytime.